This is to all those who've been listening to old time radio that I've been podcasting for 12 years. It's time for you to purchase the old time radio collection now at the lowest prices ever. 500 gigabyte external hard drive chuck full of radio shows that we all love. And don't forget the bonuses. Here's my offer. I need everyone who hears my voice to go to oldtimeradiodvd.com to place your order today. With every order, I will include a comprehensive show guide with episode descriptions over 1982 pages this is truly once in a lifetime deal place your order today at oldtimeradiodvd.com you will be glad you did now the rattlesnake and the barefoot drive dramatized from true detective mysteries magazine The story begins on the night of August 5th, 1935, outside of Los Angeles, California, in the peaceful little community of La Cañada. The summer night is scented with the haunting fragrance of orange blossoms, whose drifting petals somehow seem like falling tears. And that strange sound that seems to float on the air, like the echo of some weird rattle. What is that? We shall see. Well, here we are. The honeymoon cottage. Oh, looks like a swell little bungalow, Bob. Not bad for a barber, huh, Harry? What do you say, Mother? Just marvelous, Bob. But it's all done. Not a lot of children. Say, hey, Bob, maybe Mary's asleep. Just too bad if she is. We'll make her up. Oh, Bob, don't do that. Don't you think Harry and I could come and visit some other time? Well, I'm done. Well, but I asked you and Harry to come over tonight because, well, Mary hasn't been feeling well lately, and I thought you could cheer her up. We'll try. I'm so sorry. Yes, Mary looked grand when I last saw her. Always does. She's so beautiful with that lovely blonde hair and perfect white skin. Yeah. Having a 27th birthday party soon. She'll have to come out. Here, up the driveway. Come on. Come right in. I'll turn on the lights. Oh, oh, how lovely. So this is where you keep your bride. Not bad for a barber, huh? Beautiful home, beautiful wife. Yeah, I'll call her. Mary! Oh, Mary! We got company! Yeah, that's funny. Mary, are you down here? Funny? Maybe she's upstairs. I'll run up and see. Mary, Miller Jackson had an offer on here. Mary! Harry, I, I hope nothing's the matter. Oh, well, don't be silly. What could be the matter? Mary! This house seems so, so empty. Oh, Mary's probably out in the backyard feeding those rabbits of hers Bob was telling us about. Mary! Mary! She's not up there. Oh, maybe she's visiting neighbors. Neighbors? Not a chance. She doesn't know any of them. Hey, what are those flashlights? Flashlights? Yeah, here, Harry. You take this flashlight and I'll take this one. Well, will fit outside the house. Uh, do it? Bob, yeah. do you really think? Please, say? let's hurry. Mary has been, hasn't been well lately. I'm afraid she may have a head of dizzy spell and falling down somewhere. I'm glad now we decided to stay. Yeah. Harry, you take that flashlight and look out in the front yard. I'll look around our back. All right. Uh, come on, Mildred. Outside, quick. Here. Now, I'll, I'll hold the flashlight. You see anything? No. Oh, only those orange blossoms. Anything but those flower beds? No. Oh, Harry! Is anything out of the front yard? No, Bob, nothing here. I'm looking around the rattle pen. Oh, Harry! Yes? Take a look in the side yard, will ya? All right. Come on, Mildred. It's very dark out here. I certainly needed this flashlight. Uh, what's this? Uh, it's a little fish pond with a fountain. A lily pond. Oh, look, it has water lilies in it. They're night blooming. In full bloom, too. See how they're... Harry, right? what's that? What? There. They're on the other side of the pool. Hold your flashlight. Oh, oh it's Mary! Merciful heavens! Bob! Bob! Oh, Mary! Oh, look! Look at her hair around that 
water, Lily. Oh, oh Lord. Mary, how did this happen? Oh, my poor little girl. Daddy Bond. Mary. <laughs> I think I'd better call the police. What do you think happened, James? I, I don't know, Cheryl. He's not himself <laughs> yet, Sheriff. But maybe I can help you. Do you know what happened? Well, not exactly, Sheriff, but Bob here told us that Mary, his wife, was subject to dizzy spells. Well, I figure she fainted and fell into the pond. Uh, and then... uh, yes, I see. We're going out again to look things over. You two stay here with James. Yes, sir. Come on, Jonesy. All right. Pretty shallow water for anyone to drown in. Yeah, it sure does. About eight inches deep, I figure. Too bad. Hey, what's yeah. this? Turn that flashlight down on the leg. Ooh, look at that. Oh, well, a leg is swollen nearly twice the size of the other one. Was she in an accident or something? I don't know. Here comes the doctor. We'll ask him what he thinks. Oh, Doc. Doc, here, this way, please. Oh, hello, Sheriff. Is this the patient? Uh, too late for being a patient, I guess, Doc. Looks like a drowning. Hmm. Rather unusual in a shallow pool like this, isn't it? Yeah. Say, Doc, look at that left leg. What do you make of it? Hmm. Looks like a like a bite of some sort. Do you know what kind? Well, that's that's hard to say. It might be some insect like well, like a black widow spider. But I I can't say for sure without a chemical analysis. You take charge of the body until the coroner comes, will you, Doctor? Yes, I will. Come on, Jonesy. Let's go inside again. Right. Feel any better, James? Oh. <laughs> Still too upset, eh? Maybe you can help us, North. What do you want to know? Has Mrs. James been in an accident recently? Oh, I, I really don't know. I didn't hear about any accident. Hey, what's this? Mind if I read this letter? Hmm. Look at this, Jonesy. Here's your answer. Yes, sis. Just a line to let you know I'm pretty sick. My leg is all swollen. Something bit me while watering in the garden. Been having lots of bad luck. This is old Blue Monday, but my daddy will be home early tonight, and he takes good care of me. Mary. Bitten by something in the garden, eh? So that's it. Yep. Well, you don't need us here now, do you, ma'am? Uh, suppose I take James home with me tonight. He's pretty well shot, and I think a good night's sleep somewhere else would do him good. That'll be okay, I guess. Well, come on, Bob and Mildred. We're going now. Uh, you, you sit in the back of the car, Bob, and you'll be more comfortable there. Feel any better, Bob? No. Get us up and Harry. What? Too bad Mary had a die that way. What do you mean? Well, it's going to look bad for me. For you? What are you driving at? My third wife drowned in the bathtub in Colorado about three years ago. What in the world has that got to do with it? Well, the cops will ask a lot of questions. And that's what's worrying you now? You sure are a queer duck. You afraid of being questioned. Your wife's stone dead. Gee, you don't understand, Harry. Well, I guess I don't. <laughs> See, Joey? Yes, sir. Here's how we found the body, Inspector. Face down in the pool, head and shoulders submerged, wore thin flowered silk dress, blue boudoir silk slippers, skirt pulled up over knees and legs bare. Oh, Mary loved to watch the goldfish play in the pond. Hey, Bob, <laughs> come on now, calm down. She must have faded and fallen in the pond. Mr. James, the law of Los Angeles County has no wish to meddle with a husband's <laughs> grief. We simply want the facts. Yes, sir. Sheriff Joey. <laughs> Are all your witnesses present? Yes, Inspector. All right. Go ahead, Sheriff. We found this note, Inspector, on the table in the kitchen of the deceased home. Let me have it. Uh, Mr. James, is this your wife's handwriting? Yes, sir. Uh, this letter is addressed to Mrs. R. Stewart, Las Vegas, Nevada. Do you know her? Yes, sir. Mrs. Stewart is her sister. Something bit her while watering in the garden. 
That would account for the swollen leg. Hmm. Today is Old Blue Monday. My daddy will be home early tonight. Uh, Mr. James, you were at the barber shop all day yesterday? Yes, sir. How long have you been married to the deceased? Three months. And say, Inspector, I've been married five times altogether. Quite a record for a man only 39, huh? Mr. James, we're not interested at this time in how many wives you've had. We're investigating the circumstances of this death. Sure, I, I thought I'd tell you about the other marriages so you wouldn't think I was holding out on you. I see. I'll say this. Mary was the best of the lot. She was a fine girl. Mr. James, did your wife carry any insurance? Yes. In a way, I'm sorry she did. That kind of puts me on the spot. You see, I'm the beneficiary. We're not accusing you of anything. How much insurance did your wife carry? She had two $5,000 policies that carried double indemnity clauses in case of accidental death. Mm, insurance, all right. Oh, uh, Dr. Long. Uh, yes, Inspector. Uh, Dr. Long? Are you the James family physician? I was called in to treat Mrs. James about seven weeks ago. Go on, Doctor. Mrs. James was an expectant mother. Was Mrs. James subject to fainting spells? She was quite nervous. I prescribed a mild sedative. Would you say that in view of the state of her health, she might have fainted and fallen into the pool? Well, yes, it, it could have happened. Poor woman. Mother. Mother. Don't, don't cry, Bob. Please don't cry. <laughs> Mary James was laid to rest in Los Angeles, near the third wife of Robert James. The two brides of the strange barber lay side by side in eternal sleep. But the tragic story of Mary was not yet to have its final heart-rending chapter written. For while Robert James once more applied his shears in his barber shop, in the office of Buren Fitz, district attorney of Los Angeles County, the shears of fate were also sniffing. Oh, uh, Tui, let's hear that coroner's report again. Yes, Mr. Fitz. Coroner's surgeon's report, Mrs. Mary Bush James came to her death on the night of August the 5th, 1935, as a result of drowning, with acute cellulitis of left foot and left leg following laceration of great left toe as contributing factor. Verdict, accidental drowning, case automatically closed. All right, Tui. Well, what else have you to suggest, Inspector Sutherland? And Mr. Fitz, there's about only one thing left to do. What's that? I've been doing some scouting around. This fellow James is taking a house out on LaSalle Avenue. Mm. Who's his next-door neighbor? The house next door is vacant. Now, my idea would be to install a microphone in his house. Rent the house next door and listen in for a while. Hmm, that's a good idea. Oh, Sergeant, get me Chief of Police Davis on the phone. I want the best sound man in the department. <laughs> Microphone working now? Yes, sir. One in the bedroom and one in the living room. Okay, here comes a voice that they don't expect. Turn it on. He has something on James. He owns the green Jewett. That's all we know, but that's plenty. Come on, let's go. Right. 
of Los Angeles was on, armed with a complete list of all cars registered in the name of Hope, the law, grim and quiet, checked them one by one. On the morning of May 2nd, Inspector Southern and Tui, acting on a tip, drove up to a lunchroom in Hermosa Beach, where Charlie Hope was employed and placed him under arrest for the murder of Mary Jane. While he was being drilled at headquarters, the two officers resumed their vigil at the recording instrument in the house next door to the one occupied by Bob James. James is a later than usual tonight. I wonder if he knows that Hope was picked up today. No, the DA's office has him undercover. But Hope didn't crack yet, Captain. Don't worry, Toe. With Williams billing him, it won't be long now. We played James tonight, eh? You heard the chief's orders. We've got to get him red-handed. Listen. Here they come now. Well, I tomorrow Sunday. I'm tired. Me too. What's the hurry? You like me anymore? How could I? Well, I didn't. Come on. No. Please, please. What's the matter with you anyway? No! No! Come back alone! Hey, Joey! Just run away from me. You should have done that a long time ago. Open that door, I'll break it down, you hear me? Open that door! I don't know what's going on again. Oh, please, please, I'll find another one. Enough, let's speak up. Let's pull our raid. Okay. Do you have the pass key? Yeah, here it is. Let's go over. This way. Come in. I'll open the door. You walk it fast. Careful. James will have a gun. Nothing. We can, Harry. But well, how about this? Hey, come away. Oh. You'll come, all right. You too, sister. Oh, why did I ever get in this mess? I'll never talk about this. Against him. Charles Hope, I hand you the signed paper. Can you identify it? Yes, sir, I can. Tell the court what it is. My confession. You admit you wrote it? Yes, sir, I do. And you signed it? I did. Of your own free will? Yes, sir. You weren't forced to sign it? No, sir. Will you please read it to the jury? I Charles H. Hope. For the purpose of... Oh, oh, just a minute, just a minute. You may start with the next paragraph, please. Yes, sir. About a year ago, I was broke. Went to Robert James' barber shop in Los Angeles to see if I could get a free haircut and shave. Oh, now, listen, Bob. Give me a free ride in the barber chair. Maybe I can help you someday. Maybe I help Bob James. Yeah. Maybe you're the man I'm looking for. Like to make a hundred dollars? Boy, I jump at that chance. Mm-hmm. How do I earn this hundred bucks? Yes, huh? A friend of mine says he'll pay a hundred dollars for some good live rattlesnake. Huh? Rattlesnake? Yeah, rattlesnake. Not afraid of mine. <laughs> for that money, I ain't afraid of that. Huh? There's the money. Give me two of the kind of snakes I want and keep the rest of the bill. Come on, I'll take my car. Come on. <laughs> Snake Joe, that's me. Got any good diamondback rattlesnake? Well, I got the meanest diamondback around here. Number two, mister. But they got a lot of venom in them. Venom? Say, that's what Snake Joe's known for. They have what you call hot snakes, full of venom. You see them rattling down in the pit? Yeah, sure. How about them two big rattlesnakes over there in the corner of the pit? How much would they be? Oh, I'll sell them rattles to you for 70 cents a pound. Oh, you sell them by the pound, eh? I'm oh, sure. That's the only way to tell rattlesnakes. Okay. I'll take them two big ones. Huh? Yeah, there's my stick in the loose here. Oh, here they are. Come on, lightning. Come on, there, four guns. Oh, I tell you, four of them two diamond bags is the meanest killers in the state of California. And they're wicked. Yeah, I brought the stocks with a glass top, put them in here. 
Say, boss, sounds meaner than lightning. <laughs> yeah, they're plenty hot. Now, let's see. Take off the bait of the box. That's ten and a half pounds of powder snake. That's seven dollars and thirty-five cents. Change out of ten. Well, here you are. I'll come again sometime. Okay. I got the snake, bum. Fine. You should back there with him. A hot one? Yeah, and how? Diamondbacks and plenty hot. Huh? There's no third party in this. I want to collect some insurance. You're the only one in it with me. I don't get you. Huh? You'll soon find out. My wife, she's the one. Yeah. I don't want to be mixed up in this kind of business. You'd like to get some real dough, wouldn't you? Yeah. Excuse me. I thought so. Box of yeah, over there behind the door. Yeah, Mary, I'll be in, sir. Be sick. Boy, I can't figure you out. Yeah, sit down. Come on, let's have a drink. Hey, where are you going with that rope? Wait a minute, Joe. Sir. Come and heat his cake. Hey, what are you doing with that? What? Shut up. It's going to be done right. Joe, sir. I'm so glad you're home. I don't feel well, dear. Please call the doctor. You want me to doctor when I'm through with you? Bob, what do you mean? Please, Bob, don't you understand? I don't feel very well. Yeah. I'm so sorry, man. Come here. Come on. What do you want, Bob? Now, here. Take this pen and write what I tell you. Well, what do you want me to write? Bob, dear, what's come over you? You look so strange. Never mind. Just write. Okay. Write this. Dear sis. Just a line to let you know I'm pretty sick. Pretty sick? Yeah. My leg is all swollen. Well, Bob, what do you mean? My leg isn't swollen. I said right. My leg is all swollen. Something bit me while watering in the garden. Yeah. I'm uh, having lots of bad luck. This is old Blue Monday, but, uh, but my daddy will be home early tonight, and he takes good care of me. Uh, find it, Mary. Now put your darling sister's name and address on this envelope. All right. Bob, why did you make me write this to me? Turn around and don't talk so much. What are you doing with that? It's easy to take off. Bob, I'm frightened. Shut up. Bob, Shut up. what are you trying to do to me? Oh, my God. 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 Give it to me. I'll turn the kitchen table. Hurry up. Oh, Hurry up. She can't see. Shut up. Where's the button? There. There they are. Get him. Get him. What are you standing around looking like that for? All right. All right. I'll get him. Put him down. Put the box down. Here, by her foot. Take the lid off. Take it off, I tell you. Take it off. It. She's barefoot. Oh, don't put her foot in there. Stop. The snake off. and give him the snake, Joe. <laughs> what? I couldn't stand it any. Is he dead yet? Is he dead yet? She's been dead since four o'clock. To make double sure, I drown in the bathtub. She's finished now, all right? Come in and help me carry her out. No, I can't. Come I can't on. Do Come on. You take her feet. I'll carry her head. We'll put her in a lily pond. Come on. And then, after that, he cleaned up the bathroom, and he drove me home. That's a lie! It's a lie! You did it! You did it! You did it! Robert S. James, jury having found you guilty of murder in the first degree, I hereby sentence you to be executed according to the law of the state of California. At San Quentin Prison, at the time prescribed, you are to be hanged by the neck until you are dead. The story 
story you have just heard is The Rattlesnake and the Barefoot Bride, dramatized from True Detective Mysteries magazine and electrically transcribed for your pleasure by Trans-American. <laughs>